Hello, my name is James and today I'm going to show you how to compile, deploy and interact with a Solidity smart contract in the KEVM environment. Now to start out, you're going to want to download and install Mallet. You can find out how to do that over at the GitHub repository and there's a readme file. So to start out, I'm going to connect to the KEVM network. Now uh, this is a, uh, a fresh data directory, so we're going to want to create a new account. And then we can uh, select that account. Now I haven't got any funds, but that's okay because we can request some from the faucet. Uh, while we're waiting for that, over here what I've got is a Solidity Smart Contract. It's quite a simple one. Um, it's targeting the Solidity compiler version 0.5.1. Uh, there's a couple of state variables, uh, both are integers. Its constructor simply assigns uh, values to these variables, 5 and 10. And then we've got a few functions here. Uh, this one will increment the value of x by the uh, the value that's passed in. And we'll actually also be using the getter for returning the value of x. Okay, so now I should have some funds to play with. But what we actually need to do is compile this because you can't use the text uh, format the EVM expects bytecode. Uh, now the best way I found to do this actually is to use the official uh, Solidity compiler docker image. And you can tell it to target a particular version. Uh, what this will do is take the uh, Solidity text file up here as an input and then generate the bytecode for us. Okay, so now we've got a couple of files here. There's a binary file and an abbey file. The binary file contains our bytecode, and I'll get back to the abbey file in a minute. So back over in Mallet, what we want to do is read the uh, contents of that binary file there and store that. Uh, don't forget to prepend it with this. Okay now we've got that what we can do is we can create a transaction. So uh, I've got the, da the data as the input that's the contract code from above and uh, we'll give it some gas and we can submit that. So this is our transaction hash, and we'll give it a short while. Just wait for it to make its way onto the blockchain. Now there's our receipt, and in there you can see we have a contract address. So I'm actually going to store that contract address because we're going to need that. First thing that's good to do is just to confirm that the uh, that the code made it onto the blockchain. So uh, I'm using the contract ad address from the uh, receipt, and here we can see it's read back the same bytecode that we just used. What we can also do is inspect the state variables of that contract. Uh, this is performed locally. Uh, this is just going to get the storage at position 1. It's a value of 5. Similarly, in the second position, you've got a value of 10 in hexadecimal. Okay, so what we want to do now is we're going to call a setter and we want to in increment one of these. Now the way to do that 
and this is where the Abbey file comes in. Let's just take a look at that file. Now it's actually in JSON format, so I'll show you it. It's simply a definition of the functions of the smart contract. So you can see we've got the two getters here and the two setters here. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to print that back out in plain text. What we actually want to do first, uh, we need to install a, uh, a library for Node. So using the Node package manager, we want to install this Web3 ETH Abbey library. And then down here, I've got a node console and first of all, we want to import that library and then we can use its encode function call function. And what we want is the JSON object of the increment X function take that uh, and this isn't the only argument that this function takes it also takes an array of the arguments for the solidity function uh, so if we just scroll back up quickly this is the increment X setter and it takes a single integer uh, and so Let's just pick pick a value, uh, just go with seven. Okay, so that's the bytecode that we're going to use. So back over in Mallet, what we want to do is create another transaction, but this time the data is going to be the bytecode that we just uh, generated. So this is a transaction now to the contract and uh, we can send that. And there's our transaction hash. Just give it a short while. Okay. There's our receipt. So now we want to prove that the value has actually been incremented and now we could do what we did before where we uh, inspected the um, sorry here where we inspected the storage but instead uh, we'll call one of the getters so we want to get x and take that and very similar to how we did with the setter Paste that in here, and there's our getter bytecode. The only difference here is that we don't need to send a transaction because this is just a getter. We can access our uh, the, the local client will tell us what is stored there. It doesn't cost anything to access with the getter because we're not writing to the blockchain. So what we want to do is use this call function here. And there you go. I've got a value back now of zero C, which is 12. So that's uh, proven that we've incremented from 5 up uh, by, by 7 to 12. And then I guess we could also uh, run this again as well. There we go. Okay, so now we've done that, what I want to show you is uh, something a little bit different. 
let's just uh... so this is a different solidity contract here this one um, is called check balance it uh, also targets the same version uh, uh, this one doesn't have any state variables uh, instead it uh, allows you to deposit funds and then read back the uh, deposited amount or the total balance so here it has a constructor there's no executable code within it but it has this payable modifier and that means that when we create the contract it will allow us to deposit funds at the same time and it also has this getter here which actually just returns its address and another getter here which returns the balance of this contract now uh, there's actually a, a deposit function here as well which is also marked as payable this just allows us to add more funds at a later stage so very similarly to how we did earlier using the docker image we can generate so now actually in this output directory we have uh, a couple of new files for this check balance contract and we've got some different bytecode in here so let's uh, just clear the screen and uh, read that new contract in and this time we're gonna have some value that will send it so let's just send 500 we've got some gas there we've got the contract bytecode and a value of 500 we'll wait a short while So there's our receipt and we can store that contract address again and just make sure that the bytecode can be read back out. Excellent. So now we actually want to, well, we want to check that the balance is correct because we've sent it 500. So we want to make sure that that is actually stored and recognized by the contract. So, again, we're going to need this Abbey file. Oh. And in here, there's the uh, get contract balance. I'm going to copy that. And we'll take this bytecode here and we'll use the call method again. There we go. So that is a value of 500. And uh, just to demonstrate how we can add more funds, very similar again. Take the JSON of the deposit function. Okay, so this error is actually because I haven't provided enough arguments and now I can see uh, that the uh, deposit function has this uh, expected parameter which isn't actually necessary. Uh, so this is a, a bug, but let's go with it. So we can just use any 
any argument in here just to satisfy the the uh, the encoder because uh, as you can see up here it's not actually executing any code so anything that you do pass in will just be uh, discarded so we can uh, Create a transaction, we go into the contract, got some gas, we'll pick a different value this time, let's just go with uh, um, 10. And we can send that, wait a short while. Okay. So we can uh, just use this same call function from up here, and there you have it. We now have 510 in our contract. So I th hope this has been helpful, and uh, thank you for watching.